There are economic, there are moral, even legal arguments against forgiving student debt in this way. Last year, even Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the President of the United States does not have the authority to cancel debt. People think that the President of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone, he can delay, but he does not have that power. That, would, that has to be an act of Congress. That was in July of last year. A former top lawyer at the Department of Education under Barack Obama telling The Wall Street Journal it is, quote, doubtful the courts will let this stand. On the economic front, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, among many, arguing canceling student debt will increase inflation by encouraging colleges to raise tuition. And a former economic advisor for President Obama tweeted this, quote, pouring roughly half trillion dollars of gasoline on the inflationary fire that is already burning is reckless. The Wall Street Journal editorial board calls it a moral hazard, writing in part, those who will pay for this write-off are the tens of millions of Americans who didn't go to college or repaid their debt or skimped and saved to pay for college or chose lower-cost schools to avoid a debt trap. This is a college graduate bailout paid for by plumbers and FedEx drivers. According to the latest census, fewer than half of American adults hold a college degree. And the recent NBC News poll found debt cancellation not particularly popular anyway. 46% of registered voters say they are more likely to vote for a candidate who supports canceling student debt. 33% said it is less likely. Let's bring into the conversation columnist, The Washington Post, Megan McArdle, and former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst, Steve Ratner. Good morning to you both. Steve, let me begin with you just on the pure economics of this. Uh, what do you think this does to the economy? What do you think it does to inflation? Well, first of all, Willie, it would be difficult to overstate the vastness of this program. This is a huge, huge uh, amount of money that is going to change hands in basically one fell swoop of the president's pen. There aren't yet estimates, real good estimates, of what the cost will be, but let's call it something in the $500 billion range. Uh, that is pure increase in the deficit and costs of the federal government, and that's roughly twice the size of the amount of deficit reduction that was in the Manchin-Schumer bill that was just passed. In terms of uh, the size of the spending in the Manchin-Schumer bill, this is larger. Uh, it's the largest, I believe, amount of money ever dispersed by an executive order. And so we just have to really uh, kind of gasp a little bit at the scale of all this. In terms of the economy, yes, it is, it is going to uh, nudge us to the inflationary side. Uh, you, you saw the Larry Summers and the Jason Furman quotes that you just put up. I would say that that is not, that would not to me be a deal breaker. It's not ideal. We don't want to be increasing inflation or inflationary pressures at this point in time. We don't want to be increasing the size of the deficit and the size of our debt at this particular point in time. The whole point, or one of the points of Manchin Schumer was to reduce the amount of debt through uh, deficit reduction, not to increase it. And this goes in the wrong direction uh, on that. But I think by far the biggest issue is the issue of fairness that you alluded to in various of the other, conver uh, the other conversations. Uh, half of Americans who don't go to college don't benefit from this. People who, like your family, that worked hard, took an extra job to put their kid through college so he didn't have to graduate with debt, don't get anything from this. Uh, there, are, there are substantial questions of fairness here in terms of uh, who's going to benefit and who's going to be left uh, without really getting any benefit from this. Megan, your piece in the Washington Post is titled Biden's student loan fix. It's perfect for making the problem worse. Um, there certainly are a lot of people out there this morning who kind of feel like suckers for having worked a second job or having paid off their student loans or gone to a college maybe that they thought they could afford versus one that they'd have to pay off for, for you know, 20 or 30 years. Um, so what's your let's break down your piece a little bit. What's at the core of your argument against this? Uh, look, I agree with Mr. Ratner. There are a lot of reasons that this is problematic. It causes fairness problems for people who worked hard to pay off their debt or to put their kids through school without debt. Um, but it also is going to create pressure for future such bailouts. You know, you look at the the graduate, the people who are enrolling in college next year, right? They are getting the, the, the reduction to a 5% uh, rate on their income-based repayment, but they're not getting the $10,000. And they're going to look at that and say, look, tuition is still going up. Why? This is, this is unfair. And they're going to say to the administration, what about me? 
you're, you're kind of creating this pressure to keep doing this over and over again. And it's not fixing, it's not only not fixing the problem of rising college costs, it's actually making that problem worse. So there is considerable evidence that in fact, subsidizing student loan debt, you know, it, it seems like a great idea. It allows people, you say, look, you're gonna be making a lot more money in the future. Let's let you bring a little bit of that income forward and use it to pay your tuition in the same way that we do this with mortgages and car loans and business loans. But the problem is that colleges can respond to that by saying, oh, you can pay more, let me raise tuition. And that has been yeah. one of the things driving um, the, the last you know 40 years of, of tuition increases is this ability to pay more. And so by making it even easier to borrow money, the thing I said in the column is this is kind of like trying to quit smoking by switching to unfiltered cigarettes. So Rev, what about the fairness question? I'll let you take it to Megan, but people, the majority of Americans don't have a four-year college degree. And they're saying, wait a minute, why am I paying for people who went to college, took out big loans, and then got that wiped out in tax increases in, all, in this uh, half a trillion dollars, potentially, that's going to have to be spent to cover it? What do you say to that? I mean, I, I think you understand that feeling, but at the, uh, same, uh, uh, in the same way, I think that a lot of people would say, I'm glad to see people may not have to go through what I went through. I mean, it's kind of really uh, tricky to say, I went through two jobs, so I want everybody to have to go through two jobs. I think it's probably the more mature way to say, I'm glad people don't have to go through what I went through. But I think, Megan, where I agree with you, and I, I want you to elaborate, is where we put pressure on those institutions to deal with the higher tuitions and to deal with what they are doing to try to uh, to meet the hour. I, I happen to think uh, the way uh, the president moved yesterday was good uh, in terms of direction. I wish he'd gone further. But I, I think that it does not address the escalating uh, college uh, prices or college uh, uh, the amounts that they're getting for tuitions and all. And I think that there needs to be more focus on how we kind of bring that in.